Okay, in this particular tutorial I'll show you how to um, create a macro and how to highlight data, how to highlight interesting data um, that you actually want to use. So, for instance, one thing we want to do is calculate heart rate variability and to do that we want to highlight between two specific beats like this. Determine how long it takes uh, between QRS complexes, so your RR, R to R interval from R wave to R wave. And then you want to move along and get the next one, and then follow this by the following one, and all the while dumping this information into Datapad. So what we can do with a macro, a macro is just kind of like a series of steps that you tell the computer to do, and then you can have it re re reproduce or repeat those steps as many times as you want. The first thing we need to know about um, doing a heart rate variability macro and getting the R to R interval is how can we locate a spike on this particular signal? All right, to highlight between two beats, you need to know um, how big that spike is relative to the whole range. So in this case, the range of this particular channel is 100 by 100 millivolts, and therefore the signal is about half a millivolt and therefore it's about 0.2% of the total. Since I'm using the Mac version, um, I will not be able to locate that specific local maxima using the noise threshold. Um, so when I click on that particular channel, I go to Commands and Find. I click on Find Data, a local peak or maxima, 1% above the threshold baseline on the ECG channel. If it was a large enough spike, or 1%, which would be 2 millivolts, um, you'd be able to locate that first spike. But as you can see, the cursor never actually highlighted or located a spike. In this particular case, it's going and looking through the whole signal, and it says it can't find one. So what I've done is added a derivative channel to the bottom and um, instead of using the R spike from this, I'll use the maximum point on the derivative to locate the start of that RR interval. So on this particular time of looking and finding data, we go to the derivative channel, look for a noise threshold, let's say about 10%, we set it as an active point, and click find, and if you'll notice the cursor moved from in between these two beats, to locate this particular beat. I'm just going to test that on a number of beats by moving forward to the next uh, particular spike by clicking Find Next. And by clicking Find Next several times, you'll notice that the spike in this case is actually moving backwards. Uh, but if we go Find in the forward direction, 10%, you'll notice that each time I do that, the cursor moves from one point to the next R spike. So I'm just going to keep going. Let's see how good this threshold is. And it's pretty good. It locates all the points perfectly. So I've determined that if we use 10% um, above baseline noise threshold, we would be able to locate every peak in the whole series. So now I can start building my macro, which is just a series of steps again that I ask the computer to do over and over again. So the series of steps, first I'll start recording my macro, which means it's just going to record which steps I do um, into a file that you'll name. And then after I've completed my macro, you can then select that macro from this list here, and it will complete those steps a number of times, or whatever you decided to create. So starting the macro, First thing we do, in this particular case, we want to find local maxima, 10% threshold, and set it as the active point. We want to now take that information, so basically the position of this in the time domain, and add that information to the data pad. So to do that, we just add to data pad, or hit Command D. What that does in the data pad is creates one entry, go to the bottom, 
at that particular time. We want the computer to repeat this at least 500 times. So we go into the macro commands. We go begin repeat. and We tell the computer to do the same series of steps that I'm now going to do 500 times. So begin repeat. Find the next point. Add that information to datapad. And that's the um, series of steps that we want to repeat. So we end that repeat. We stop recording. We name it as HRV500. We'll put dash two because there's one already saved as da as HRV500. So now I've recorded all the steps in this particular macro. So the macro is built so that it locates the first spot, dumps information about that, so the selection time, or the selection start into the data pad, it then jumps to the next one, and so on and so on, and so forth 500 times. So now we can run that macro by selecting an area on any channel, clicking macro, going to HRV 500-2. Once I click this, you don't actually see much happening, but you'll notice that in the corner here, it's playing the macro, and every little while, the screen updates. So in this particular case, that cursor is jumping from R wave to R wave and dumping information about where it is relative to time into the data pad. And it continues this for 500 repeats. And so in our data pad, when we're finished, we should end up with 500 separate lines indicating the time when that actually occurred. So if we now look into our data pad, we have a series of times starting from this point onwards. And we can use this particular row or any measures of heart rate variability we want to make. So you can highlight this. And select it all. Copy it off into Excel. Get rid of what you don't need. And this column here would be your RR intervals. That you can import into Cubius and use for your heart rate variability analysis. That's it for that particular tutorial. Um, creating macros to highlight areas are uh, useful for both um, heart rate variability as well as determining pulse pressures for specific beats. So if you want, you can build a macro that will highlight a specific beat and give you information relative or relating to the tonometer signal on your fourth channel. A couple of these have been already created. There should be a, one of these in pretty much every one of the files that you'll be looking at. So if we were to look for a tonometer signal, say a radial tonometer, click in that radial tonometer, and run this particular macro called carotid 20 10 percent which highlights 20 specific beats with a threshold of 10 percent you'll notice that it goes across the data file and all the while dumps 20 heart cycles worth of data into your data pad from this you can use these particular values to determine your pulse pressures after calibration in excel and that'll be the topic of another one of these tutorials